In my dream, I am alone, helpless and lost amongst the evergreens. Sweaty palms, an elevated heart rate, shortness of breath. I am consumed by fear, overwhelmed by the helpless and uncontrollable anxiety. It's something I've dealt with for as long as I can remember. My mind has always loved to embrace worst case scenarios, irrational fears that might suddenly manifest themselves. It's a major reason as to why I continue to challenge myself physically, so I can face these demons head on and feel the catharsis when I conquer them. But this fear of the unknown doesn't go away. This dream started when I registered for my very first 100 miler, a notoriously difficult old school mountain race that starts and finishes minutes from where I grew up in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. I was drawn to the scale of the challenge. I wanted to accomplish something I believed was impossible, surrounded by a team that supported and pushed me to the very end, to prove that in fact impossible does not exist, even for a regular guy like me. I needed to show myself that I could face an insurmountable distance, that I was more than the voices in my mind. I wanted to prove once and for all that my anxiety does not control me. The goal is obviously to finish this race, that's it. So there's gonna be times when I'm super low. Nutrition hopefully won't be off by too much. But the goal is not to stay in an aid station too long. Uh, unless I really need like hot food or something to keep me from getting hypo. This is my crew for Cascade Crest 100. To my right, my wonderful wife, Kimberly Tashima Newberry, crew captain. To my left, Miss Destiny Sun. It was originally gonna be ice captain. Because you were gonna keep me cold and iced. Yeah, now you're my cuddle captain. I'm the cuddle captain? Yeah. <laughs> Behind the camera is Mr. Justin's son, my best friend. Amazing. And not present is my uh, pacer that will take me the last 50K, and that is Mr. Gary Robbins. He hasn't come across the board yet. He will be here in a couple of days. Okay, so let's start talking about the race. Uh, it's 100 miles. Well, if you can't tell, this is me freaking out. I'm anxious, I'm nervous, I'm an absolute mess inside. Months of worry have led to this, the first crew meeting days before the start of the Cascade Crest 100. Speaking of which, Cascade Crest 100, also known as the Cascade Crest Classic, is a 100 mile loop course comprised of unrelenting beautiful northwest trails with over 23,000 feet of elevation gain that starts and finishes in Easton, Washington, a small town that features a dog as its mayor. Yep. Everything from single track, crazy technical descents, rope sections, tunnels, cliffs, peaks, you name it, this course has it, and then some. You may not make it to Mineral Creek by the time I roll through, you might, and then we can all see each other. This would give you about two hours to sleep, mm -hmm. and then another uh, probably five or six hours to sleep. So I think uh, the ones that might take longer are ones where I might have to change clothes mm -hmm. or add more layers and stuff like that. If it means me hours. potentially seeing Ethan uh -huh. like one last time before mile 96, uh, I'll rally. Yeah, okay. When we sat down and did that with Quicksilver, <laughs> that actually worked really well. I think that's it for, for tonight. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, we have a couple more days. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, but again, I'm really, really thankful, guys. I appreciate it. Let's go around 100 miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>First crew meeting finished, it was time for some last minute supplies, organizing drop bags, and seeing some old friends. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, that's actually what I'm doing all day tomorrow. Don't be shy. <laughs> this is Glenn Takayama, photographer extraordinaire. <laughs> He'll be out there on the course as well. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big race. Uh, I'm pretty nervous and anxious at this point. It's um, about 8.40 on Friday night. Uh, I've been training in heat leading up to the race and then I find out uh, this last week that it's gonna be pouring down rain. So we've kind of had to adjust our plans here and kind of recycle certain things in certain drop bags and make sure that we have enough gear for the cold and, and wet um, aid stations, which means it's a completely opposite race than I anticipated. Um, but you gotta adapt. So that's kind of what we're doing. Just basically layering up and, and getting all the supplies into 
into various locations so I can get drop bags with gear uh, in case I get really wet and have my crew carry a bunch of extra stuff in case everything gets soaking. So that's kind of what we're doing now. Can't wait to just wake up and run. Hopefully I can get some sleep. I am on my way to the start line of my very first 100 mile race and my heart rate is through the roof. I'm really, really anxious. I'm ready to get started. I'm also just dreading the day ahead because I know it's going to be pretty tough. I really don't know what the day is going to hold, so I'm going to embrace it all and get it done as best as possible. I'm in awe. I, just the thought of 100 miles driving is exhausting and running at is it's unfathomable to me. Very encouraging that you can push through all the pain and agony that you have to, to do this run. You'll do fine. We love you, Ethan. And we're really proud of this moment. We're just, uh, we're in awe. And we just hope he he comes through this feeling exhilarated and glad that he did it and not, I'll never do this again. But I wouldn't mind it if he never did it again. So. <laughs> it is a tough course, um, but it is a great event. A lot of people chose this as their first 100 miler, including myself. So it is a tough one. He's gonna have a challenge out there, but um, you know, as far as I think he chose it, partly because he, he grew up in Seattle or in the greater Seattle area, so part of it's coming home. We got great trails, and by all accounts, and we got the reputation of just having a, a great, well-run event put on by volunteers that uh, just love to be here, and we just put on a good party. He's gonna do great. I used the first few miles as a way to relax, get through my start line panic attack, and find an easy rhythm. I found my mind reflecting on the people, the reasons, and all the long days of training that led me to being here. Hi, so I'm just about 50 days out from Cascade Crest, and so far training has been going well. I'm just kind of doing my diligence and rocking the long runs back to backs, about 95 degrees. I'm at mile five of probably around 20. 42 days and counting. Climbing up Mount Wilson, is a really great seven mile, about 5,000 foot climb and you can run back down, which is great. And there's been reports of a bear up ahead, so we're making noise. It's raining right now, so I'm gonna put the camera away real quick, but we just got trapped in probably one of the craziest storms I've ever been a part of. We basically had to haul ass down the mountain for fear of our lives. I, I'm not even exaggerating. It's the left ankle that is sprained. This hurts. This hurts like a bitch. <laughs> So I just got this email from a viewer. Hello, Ethan. Please think again about starting the CC100. Talk it over with your wife and friends. Blah, blah, blah. You have so many different things on your calendar. In my eyes, it would be a smart move to cancel the Cascade Crest run and no one would call this a failure. Uh, I would. If 
If anything, this is just fuel for my fire. There's no way I'm not gonna start Cascade Crest. 36 days until Cascade Crest. 25 miles today, getting my ass kicked. 35 days until race. Have a really hot day full of ups. Out on the Cascade Crest 100 course. We're doing a little course preview today. 10 days. There are 10 days left until Cascade Crest 100. I'm very excited, very anxious, ready to start. So here we are. The first few miles of Cascade Crest are fun. Fire roads head out of Easton and into the forest, gradually leading to a rutted out single track that climbs 3,500 feet up to Goat Peak. First climb, Goat Peak. Feeling good, taking my time. Slow and steady. It is beautiful. The rain hasn't come yet. I have a feeling it will. But right now, it's perfect. California man. This is Sanad. Rocking his first hundred with me. Pretty Hoping deep. to. Hoping to. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get our buckles. Let's do it. I'm just about to hit the PCT, which is a beautiful section. And we just came through a section riddled with bees. It's notorious for being uh, a beehive haven. Sure enough, bees everywhere. A little sprinting involved. I'm just about to the aid station where I get to see my crew for the first time. I'm feeling okay. This course is gorgeous. This is an amazing, amazing course. It's already super tough, but I'm going slow and steady. We're at Tacoma Pass right now, which is our first point that we can actually see him. So we are, I think, mile 23. I'm feeling optimistic. I think Ethan is hopefully doing a really good job pacing himself for the first portion of the race, just taking it nice and easy, nice and slow. I just know a race of this distance can kind of bring up some demons, anxiety, panic. Uh, we had a little bit of that this morning. Um, He's been working really hard at trying to deal with that and keep it at bay. So I just hope he he remembers all of his training and remembers why he's here and keeps that under control. My words of advice for Ethan would be don't fall down, don't fall off a cliff, don't trip, watch where you're going and just keep one foot in front of the other. And at night, watch out for cougars and stuff because he's, he's pretty needy. You'd make a great snack. <laughs> the best piece of last minute advice I received was from my pacer, Gary Robbins. He informed my naive mind that my very optimistic predicted arrival time at the Tacoma Pass aid station was on master's course record pace, and that maybe I should slow it down a bit. By slowing down, I felt incredibly strong and confident heading back out to face the remaining 77 miles. Yeah, that my estimates were way off. Yeah, just the shoulder. Let's do this. Yeah, totally. All right. Ah, Dick is Are you good. Sure? Yeah, Dick is great. He is? That's awesome. Thank you. See you guys. See you Yeah, you too. One way, two out. Nice work. the second in station where I get to see my crew. The volunteers at this race are incredible. 
They run right up to you as soon as you enter an aid station, take care of you. Tons of food, they hike it all, it's insane. So thank you volunteers. I have a long day ahead of me, but I know that I'm in good hands. I'm definitely slower, happy about that, because hopefully that'll allow me to save some strength for later. Let's get back to running. Amazing advice. That front section is it's ridiculous. Brutal. It's, it's brutal. It's brutal, right? I'm at like 9,500 feet elevation already. We just got to the 50 <laughs> Yeah, and then from here yeah. you're on the PCT. Like the next section is beautiful. I know. And then it drops down just to real time. Oh what was my the second God, that's model awesome. I gave you? I don't know. I this. need to know that. And I know it's like you can't feel too good too early, but yeah, I've been, yeah, I'm great on calories. So you start getting hammered with weather, don't panic. Just ride it out yeah. and be prepared to get hammered with some weather, especially as you go a bit deeper into okay. the night, okay? Yeah. 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 22 out. The sun slowly faded behind the thickening clouds and we were all dipped into darkness. This section of trail becomes technical in spots and the worsening weather was threatening but I was determined to make it to Olali Meadow 8 Station at mile 48. Things kind of took a little turn. Just kind of balancing a little bit of nausea and still putting stuff in, but it's not setting too well. Just about 47% done with this thing. And uh, I was expecting some lows. I was hoping it would be a little bit later, if at all. Just grinding through. Really can't wait to see my crew. That is an understatement. Sorry for blinding you. Okay, bye bye. You know what was super fun? Is hearing all the runners whoop, 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 whoop in the middle of the night, running, running around the mountain, whooping like wild men to each other. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We're cooking pierogies. The 16th year, we started with 32 pierogies the first year, and now we're doing 246 this That is week. so great. Thank you guys for being out here. How far to the next one? Five? Five miles. Five and then you got me. And then this is the ropes and the tunnel, yeah? Yep, tunnel, ropes. You heard that right. In the next five miles, I not only drop over 1,000 feet in less than a half mile via ropes tied to trees, I venture into an old two and a half mile long abandoned train tunnel. Fun. No, no, I'm good on temperature. I'm gonna get okay, moving again. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. I love you. You're doing Can't awesome. You Five more miles and you got me. Uh, 122 out. <laughs> you too. Love you, babe. Love you, babe. Jesus, you all right? <sighs> We've gotta be almost done. This is fucking crazy. So that happened. Welcome to the ropes course. Yeah. Oh man, we've been in here for 25 minutes. This is so weird. Man, there's lots of water pouring in and mice. Oh, a condom. I think I'm just about out. Looks like it. I am excited. Yep, that took entirely too long. Wow, what an experience. All right, time to pick up my pacer. 
Let's do this. While I was running through a mountain, the rain and cold started to move into the Hayek aid station at mile 53. This is where I would pick up Kim for her 16 miles of pacing duties. Things were about to get interesting. I'm excited. He was feeling a little bit lonely at the last aid station, which was about five miles ago. Yeah. So he's ready for some companion on the trail. Well, no, because I left that aid station line loaded with calories. That's good. Or his life tracking won't be technical. That rope section? Awesome. We gotta get out of here. By the time we reached the trails, the worst summer storm in the Northwest history had descended on the Cascade Mountains. High winds, massive amounts of rain, sleet, and freezing temperatures continued to get worse. I climbed the six miles to the remote Catchless Ridge aid station at mile 61. The warm fire looked inviting, but I had no time to waste as my soaking body quickly gave into hypothermia. My only hope would be to reach the safety of Kachis Campground seven miles below. So we just got to uh, Kachis Aid Station. I've been with Ethan for the last 16 or so miles. The weather got real while we were out there and Ethan was feeling like he was borderline hypothermic. We made it here. We're a little bit behind on calories, but I think we're catching up. We're gonna do a complete clothing change, get them all dry and kind of hit the reset button and take it from here. That's where we are. That was uh, that was not a fun, fun stretch. I was climbing really well up to the Kachilas Ridge, and then the second we got to Kachilas Ridge, it has a fire. I have a little fireplace where people are huddled around, and I was like, "We are not staying," because it got it got real, real cold, real rainy. <clears throat> Turned around and started running down, and within minutes, my body was in full, full like shaking mode, and that was not good because it was a good seven mile stretch real slow going. They just came walking in with this gold <coughs> space blanket wrapped around yeah. them. like, someone's wrapped in gold. Oh, that's Ethan. Oh, We're gonna so. spend a few minutes getting this sorted out. I don't know why I'm still carrying that fucking string cheese. Either oh, eat it or drop it. Yeah, string cheese, gross. Give Dropping it, it. Should I put my bib on the outside? Doesn't my matter. Ties. It's getting dressed. Yeah. Well, there's some if water crossings. Yeah, yeah, and we can treat water along the way and we can top up. Jump. No, here's the thing. When you step out of this truck, it's going to be 30 degrees colder. Right. And when you get to the aid station, you're going to start chilling. We need to do our best to get out of the truck and move. Are you three minutes away? Can be five. Five minutes? Yeah. Okay. There's no rush. We got lost time. And you're setting <coughs> off from here in way better shape than anybody I've seen since I've been with. So. Hey. Just. <coughs> focus and trust in what you've done. Yeah. You're doing amazing. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like shit now. Hmm? I feel like shit now. I'm so high and now I'm like so low. <clears throat> Once you and Gary get on the trail and start moving, you're going to be just fine. With my body temperature back up, Gary and I set off onto one of the toughest stretches of trail in the race, lovingly referred to as the Trail from Hell. You ready for this? This is the highlight of the course in my estimations. The Trail from Hell. And exactly. if you go out to the right a little bit too far and <laughs> slip, you could find yourself in the lake. Yeah, it's a good 200 feet below. All right, here we are up this slope. What happens if I do? Oh, that is just not right. Well, I think he's doing amazing. He's pacing really well. Picked off a couple of runners, and we are making short work of this trail. A couple of miles out from the next aid station. Whoa! <laughs> what a piece of roof! That did not work well. You 
75 into your first hundred and you're doing amazing. How, uh, how are you feeling there, bud? Far better than I ever anticipated. <laughs> the hypothermia session didn't feel so good. I'm really blown away that this body is still moving and my legs feel fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> feel really good. As the morning light slowly illuminated the fog, a short break in the weather brought us into Mineral Creek, mile 75. This is the last chance to see my crew until the final couple miles of the race. It is also the last chance to change your ad layers as I head up onto 20 of the most remote miles in the race. Sorry, what was that? Was that a... Uh, I'm a 60 year old man. Uh, Despite five layers up top and adding a third layer down low, my body was still finding a way to freeze. Climbing up to No Name Ridge at mile 82 and the highest elevations in the race on Thorpe Mountain at mile 85 wasn't helping. Ahead of me lies one of the most spectacular ridge lines featuring insane technical climbs known as the Cardiac Needles. On a good day, the ridge boasts 360 degree panoramic views all the way to Mount Rainier and beyond. This was not a good day. All right, Ethan Newberry. Mr. Ginger Runner, you're uh, struggling, facing some demons or something here, hey? You're, uh... Fending off hypothermia again. Yeah. Uh, really suffering. Can't get the can't get the negative stuff out. And I'm really weak right now. I'm having a hard time catching my breath. So, I'm wrecked. You are wrecked, How but you should be wrecked. Change. Ah, oh, no, well, how quickly they change to and fro. It's on a tough section here, and it'll change again once we get up and through. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, you're closing in on mile 80 of your first ever 100 miler right now. That is, that's gotta feel pretty good. Yeah, I imagine it's not supposed to be easy. No, wouldn't want it to be easy. <laughs> Nicely done so far. Thanks for being out here. It's been quite the night for you guys, hey? Oh, yeah, always a fun night. <laughs> Thorpe Mountain, highest part on the course, 85 and a half miles, and the weather is not super nice today. If I said it's all downhill to the finish, would you believe me? No. Smile, Ethan. <laughs> the thing I love about how Ethan's working out here today is he's, he's not stopping. That's the key to getting these things done. He feels terrible, as he should. You don't go 85 miles to feel good, but he keeps moving. And that's the only way you get to the finish line in these things. And that's why we're gonna make it to the 100 mile finish. Are you having fun yet? That's the top, baby. High point on the course. Turn around. Primarily downhill to the finish. battle to get to here. <coughs> My poo hand. <laughs> I gotta get this shit together. <laughs> 85 and a half miles. You know what that means. Mostly downhill. <laughs> Mostly downhill. We're on the home stretch, man. Oh my god. <laughs> on the home stretch. I'm gonna get that buckle, man. Hell yeah.
Despite the weather, overwhelming physical pain, or anxiety, I made it to the highest point of Cascade Crest. Thorpe Mountain was my mental checkpoint, the mark that signified I was nearly finished and the toughest elements of the race were behind me. The only thing that stood between me and the buckle was a steep technical descent into the final aid station at mile 96. I'll go get someone. We'll come up and we'll clear this out. Uh, okay, okay, if that's how you want to do it, Ethan. So we're expecting him in the next hour, and we're super excited to give him hugs and run him in. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Four short miles separated me from a goal that I thought impossible. Running 100 miles isn't just a singular effort, but a cumulative effort by those that surround the runner. There is no way I could have reached this point without my incredible crew, my friends, and loved ones near and far. Hey, little brother. Hey, Ethan. Hey, buddy. How's he going? Hey, Ethan. It's all of us. Ethan, Jamel here, coming to you from Chamonix, France. Your total rock star. Uncle Ethan. This song's for Uncle Ethan. I just want to give you a little bit of motivation and inspiration to finish. We are just so proud of you. We want to wish you and your crew good luck out there. We will be cheering you on the whole way. You are an inspiration to many people, and we are so proud of you. Go, 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 go! Kim is here for you. I'm here for you. Everybody, all the ginger runner viewers are here for you. And we want you to succeed, buddy. Why? Because you inspire us. And what you're doing right now is fucking amazing. So trust yourself. You can do it. We love you, Ethan. <laughs> Have a good race, buddy. Seriously, have fun and good luck, man. Yeah, you know, let's go for Ethan. It's around the corner. Say, have a good run. Have a good run. Say it loud. Have a good run. And we'll be there at the finish line to see you. Absolutely. Keep on trucking. We Keep love you. Keep on trucking. Love you, bud. I was alone, lost, trapped in my anxieties without help or guidance. But during my 28 hours, 44 minutes amongst the evergreens, Cascade Crest proved that in fact I am never alone. I can trust that I'm going to be okay and that I am surrounded by people willing to help. No matter how bad things get, I can look back and remember every one of those 100 miles and the people that helped make them possible. Would I run 100 miles again? I wouldn't hesitate for a second.